welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today we're talking about esports live, returning to in person events. With me today are Ari Fox and Ben Fox, the principals of GameCon and the Casino Esports Conference. Welcome, gentlemen. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Catherine. It's great to be here. We're excited to. Uh... To talk to you again. <laughs> right, yeah, yes. you know, Ari has been here. He's my, uh, the guest that's been on my show the most, so he has that honor, and, uh, but we're happy to welcome Ben, too, and um, first of all, Ari, tell us about Gamacon. What is Gamacon? Gamacon is a, it, well, it really stands for something. It stands for a game arts conference. And it, at the end of the day, really what it is, it's a, it's a conference about the cultural connection to video gaming. We start with indie games, which is, the, which is the art and the creation of the gaming world to start with, because without developers, independent developers, we wouldn't have games. We wouldn't have the games that, that are the popular games that we have today. So, so it really goes to connecting to the, to the cultural uh, uh, attachments that people have to the esports world and then to the game, video gaming world. But overall, it's everything. It's not just the creation aspect of it, but how do you express yourself as a gamer? You know, you, can you come in as a, uh, as a cosplayer and dress up as like the character that's behind me from Valorant? Or can you come and, and uh, you know, you know, as you're uh, and play with your friends and connect with them. Uh, it also includes other things besides just video gaming itself. We we have Magic the Gathering tournaments, we have esports tournaments. We have influencers that come and and talk. This we recently just had a game of con in August at uh, Agua Caliente. We had uh, Victoria um, Victoria Taylor, Veronica Taylor. All right, she was the voice of Ash Ketchum. But Ash, Ash Ketchum and Pokemon are anime products. But that is also part of the culture of a video gamer. It's the connecting to everything that millennials and Gen Zs connect to, starting with video gaming and then branching it out from there. Okay, and Ben, why don't you tell us about the Casino Esports Conference? Well, we started the Casino Esports Conference over five years ago. We're going on our sixth year, actually, um, and today uh, is, the, is the day, actually, where we're announcing the fact that we're going into one on the, I'm going to kill myself here, but on the date, which is actually for our sixth, our sixth one, which is going to be March 23rd and 24th in, in Las Vegas, uh, coming up 2022. Okay, we just finished one, actually. And the purpose or the way, the reason why we created the Casino Esport Conference in the first place was because of the entire um, kind of philosophy with, behind gamers and the gaming community and, and basically all of the new generations now. I mean, the most important thing that we learned um, while doing GameCon and, um, you know, all the other things related to gaming was that this is a community driven um, entertainment uh you know offering that that gaming that video gaming uh whether it's you know uh vr or any form even uh, even a can if somebody plays candy crush as a gamer okay so you know from that to even more competitive gaming which we call esports um which by the way makes up a not the biggest portion of the video gaming culture but yet a lot of people sort of tend to gravitate towards that we felt that we needed to create an event to teach, specifically it started as the casino industry, how to um, sort of um, you, you know, start working together with the video gaming industry and culture. And that was missing. And, and a lot of people didn't understand how to um, you know, merge the two. And uh, I, I heard one of your speakers before on another, uh, uh, another show that you had done, and they mentioned that at this point right in time, um, it's very hard to get both the corporate world to really actually understand 
the, um, the video gaming world and the culture and how to monetize or make some kind of connection to make it work for them. And uh, my brother and I have spent a lot of time, energy, and um, sort of uh, collecting a lot of information to be able to help, and people to be able to help facilitate uh, the future of the casino in general. And we feel that without this component, that it's, there will be a great detriment in um, I should say the the wagering or gambling world and or just in the entertainment casino industry. So we felt it was necessary to put on a show where we could um, you know sort of help people get started in 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 just that in in approaching and getting in. And we've come very far since our first event. Um, and COVID kind of really made it difficult for us. The last one that we did, we had to do a hybrid event but we actually pulled it off and we we're very happy about that. And now we're going into our next one. And hopefully it will be packed and live for the most part. Well, well, you know, and that's really what we're here to talk about today is that idea of going after all this time where we've, you know, done everything on uh, virtually. How do you go to a live event? I mean, how is that really happening now? Um, Ari, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, we had, we did, as I said, we did the one in Agua Caliente in August. It was the height of Delta in August. Uh, there were, there were, you know, Palm Springs as it, as it is in the summertime is like people have cleared out because it's 120 degrees. It's pretty much an oven. Um, but we all, we followed all the CDC guidelines. Everybody wore masks. There were six foot distancing. Um, and then there's other ways of doing things as well. Some of the other B2B events uh, are using an app called Clear, where you can put down your vaccinated status or a, uh, a negative uh, test result. Um, so that will enable you to get into the conference and they give you a little wristband and you wear that at the conference so that everybody knows that you're, um, you know, you're either negative for a test or that you had the, the vaccine. At this point though, you know, the pandemic is, in my opinion, I think we're hearing less and less about it in the mainstream media and the mainstream news uh, because there's only at this last I checked, was, which was a week or two ago, there's only 66 million people in the United States that are remaining unvaccinated. And I guarantee you, if you go on that and check, see how many people who are, are unvaccinated that number has probably declined or gone down. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of at a point, I think, where, where we're going to be okay. And I think, and I believe, I know that, you know, going into the next year, 2022, things are going to be very safe. I was just at an event in Atlantic City uh, on Monday and Monday and Tuesday. So, and everyone had the wrists and you have to you put your QR code and they give you that wristband. And, everyone's been vaccinated. So where is the virus going to go? It can't. So I think that we're sort of turning this corner. And in a lot of ways, it's the new normal that you would wear a mask, but we're all cognizant of the fact of not just now COVID, but also we're in flu season. So people will wear their masks for flu season. It, it, it gives us that other opportunity to realize that you're not you know, you, you can always catch something, but if you want to take that extra step, you know, we've gotten used to wearing masks. It's not an unusual yeah, thing. I agree. Yeah. You know, um, Hawaii, we have a 71% vaccination rate now, and I think we'll start having more live events and, you know, things are going to open up a lot more. Um, and, you know, hopefully people will be more comfortable flying, but, um, you know, let me ask you, Ben, is there still room for hybrid events now that people have gotten used to it? <laughs> you know, do you want to offer that option or do you want to just say, hey, you got to come here, otherwise you don't get the opportunity? No, I, I, I think staying in that second half, staying in that mindset where you are just strictly having bodies show up to uh, a location is not will not exist in, in the future. I, I think there's nothing but this. So 
if anything, it's forced our hand in trying to um, come up with a way to have somebody in, you know, uh, halfway around the world be able to attend an event without having to get on a plane anyway. And that's important because we are a one world sort of society and we're, we're actually moving more and more towards that. So it is important. They're both important. I mean, on the one hand, it's very important to press the flesh. You know, it always has been. And, and in this case, bump a fist, you know, because people just don't want it, other people's germs. So I, I can understand that. There's always that aspect. But there's also the informational side, which they do need to get. And um, when we ran our last event, um, we uh, videotaped and live streamed everything, even, even at our own um, expense and cost to do it because it's all at the end of the day, eventually they need to, to show up and meet that person. Okay. It, it really do. There's nothing like sitting across from somebody face to face and, you know, seeing their facial expressions or anything else like that. So you're going to have both and the people that can't adapt to both are going to find that they're not only can they not attract more attendees, but they're also going to be in a situation where, um, you know, the new, the new people that want to participate in these events are so used to this kind of format that they're not going to uh, do anything else. I mean, our kids the last two years have been doing virtual school, you know, and they don't like it. And eventually, you know, they go and they meet their friends on a weekend or something like that. And they hang out together with each other, even during COVID that was happening. So, you know, the generations that are emerging they're still going to expect this same kind of uh, behavior. Sure. And, you know, what's really interesting is that my, uh, me and my partner um, for North Sports Risk Management, we did, an, um, we attended, well, she attended in person event, an event in Virginia. And I, we gave a presentation and I was virtual and it worked out really well. Um, I, I think we're going to, um, it allows events to have um, presenters from all over the world and, but also have that opportunity for people to be in person. Now, Ari, last year you had the um, virtual reality component to CEC. Right. Um, what did you think about doing that versus? doing live versus having just, you know, kind of the regular Zoom type thing? Well, I think what we had there was, was uh, I liked it. It was very interactive. We had some issues. A uh, company that we were using was sort of a, um, only a year or two old, but, but there were a lot of companies that were also just forming because of the pandemic. Um, and so we did have some people dropping out of the out of the, the matrix and they're like floating in the air, things like that that happened. Um, but I loved the ability to um, walk around as an avatar, to go to the fishing hole and have a conversation um, and meet people that way. It was very, um, from all the experiences that I had uh, from being on other virtual conferences, uh, it definitely had a better impact. However, that still does not replace the human interaction that you could have because you're dealing with an avatar. You can hear the person's voice. You can see them dance. You can see them fish. You can see them do all the things, but everybody can do that same thing. So we're not individualized. It's just the avatars have this ability and functionality to do, the, do funny things or act weird or jump, on a, jump on, a, on a stage or jump on a table and you know, you know, do that stuff. So. It's a it's a great opportunity to I think it was be it was it was uh, above what all the other virtual conferences that I had attended that year had done, and we needed to do that because as as we are connected to the video gaming world, we have to have that as part of our as part of our connection to that world. I think if anything, the pandemic moved us in a place that pushed us to uh, uh, this hybrid idea, that pushed us to much more of the concept or you've probably been hearing the word metaverse um, in, you know, a lot. It's gotten us to this place of that Ready Player One movie that we saw in 2016 by Steven Spielberg. 
it's gotten us to more of that place. And that's part of the culture. That's part of the integration and social abilities of that cult of the video gaming culture that we're not going to see go away. That's going to stay. It's um, inevitable. And sure. that's yeah. yeah. And you know, Ari, that that conference was very memorable to me, probably more memorable than almost any conference I've ever attended because it was really cool for the very first time and struggling to figure it out, but to go into the virtual environment in my avatar, then to speak on a panel and then to go fishing with Fatality and you um, and you know, learn how to do virtual fishing and chat. And that was really fun and memorable. And, but on the other hand, I am kind of anxious to meet people in person and I kind of envy those people that are at those conferences in person because I know they're really having fantastic engagement. Now, um, Ben, what advice would you give to event planners when they're looking about going back to in-person events, whether it's an esports tournament or whether it's some kind of other event? Well, I, I have to say from the gaming perspective, or at least from the events that we run from GameCon, I mean the 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 current population, and I'm going to have to say of gamers, which, you know, the average age is like 35, right? So now they're getting older now, <laughs> way older. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and, and that being considered that general, uh, you know, without making too many um, sort of, um, you know, just uh, like pigeonholing them or anything else like that, that cultural concept is, like Ari said, they are, they're already very aware um, they grew up sort of in a pandemic. So they're, they're aware of how to behave, what to act, what to do, what to expect. And so um, from their perspective, when you have live events, we find uh, it's, it's not as difficult as it is from the business uh, standpoint of it. And I've, I've told you this before, I was speaking to you about it, the companies themselves that uh, are sort of being very conservative about how they send their people, what they send them to, um, and everything else like that is what is sort of the stumbling block or the slowdown in, in, in what we see as far as business going forward and, and uh, you know, aggressing even more. But what I'd say to event planners or people that are uh, you know, wanting to do what they normally do or it worked for them in the past is, you know, get with the program <laughs> because it's not, um, this is not going away. Uh, learn how to do it or speak to people that have already done it and uh, try to incorporate it in some way and figure it out. Um, it's not seamless. It has its problems. I mean, the biggest issue that we have, I know, you know, you described just before about going into the VR. It was a three, it was a 3D environment that technically could have been VR, which is really kind of where we need to head. Um, but you still need the live events, even with VR, you, you will still need them. I mean, um, you know, everybody speaks to their parents or their friends, or their relatives on Zoom or link or uh, through Skype or something like that. We're, we're used to that. But but there's going to come a point. Oh, what are you visiting? Oh, so you have to make that visit. There's just it's just the way it is. But we do, but the good news is, I mean, now we have an extra tool. So now we can progress even faster because now we can communicate with each other in an okay way that's pretty close to reality, but not yet there. And it's, it'll take years before that happens. Well, that, you that, have to embrace it. That's where we get into the metaverse conversation is that, you know, you can then jump into a metaverse with your family and you can, you know, we'll have body suits and you'll be able to. Yeah, but even touch that, and feel and you know all that stuff. So you know, it's kind of you know, I, 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 you know, what? I want to get back to the thing about live events, though, Catherine, because I don't know if I've ever told you this, but we have had at the Game of Cons that we've been running since 2015, three marriages come out of it. three Great. people, three different couples met at our events. Uh, they were uh, two of them, I think, were um, actual um, exhibitors and people who participated as exhibitors, and one were um, people who came as attendees. But we had three uh, marriages come from, from right. the, the Game of Con events. 
So that speaks volumes as to why people will eventually need to come out and be in an, an in-person event. And like I said, at Agua Caliente, what we did at the peak of a Delta, we did get a very, very good turnout. Which is, um, yeah. which is, which which is, is <clears throat> It says a lot about people. They're they're start, they, like you. They don't want to be stuck at home anymore. They want to go out. They want to be with right. people because we're right. social. We are social animals. At the end of the yeah. day, that's part of our DNA. There's nothing you can do to get right. rid of that. But from an operations standpoint, yeah, people are still uh, the people who are putting on events are still kind of in the dark a little bit. It's very hard to do. They they don't uh, really know. I mean, look, we did that that three D event, and I have to tell you. We took two days and countless videos and tutorial time just to get people to move their joysticks and move their <laughs> characters. I mean, and, and we're dealing with people that really don't even know how to delete an app on their phone. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it may have taken you a little bit. You felt a little too much time to learn how to fish or something like that. But compare that to the people that are, you know, we had to deal with that were in their 70s, you know, or, or, uh, you know, whatever, it's a big challenge, you know, so they, and, and I have to say that the, the technology itself is, is still infantile, in the sense that there are too many movements, and that was very hard to translate to, uh, to, it, it needs to be more universal, more user friendly, more, all those other things have to come into play. But you know what, we got to give it time. This is just the beginning, and uh, it's the beginning of something new and exciting. And there are a lot of people that are resisting it, and they want to go back to the old ways. <laughs> they want to just only do what they're what they're used to doing because that's their model. But this is the future, and uh, they need to embrace it and and well, figure out how to work with it. Right, and I will note that I have met lifelong friends at conferences and conventions. Some of my favorite people that I've ever met have been someone I've met at an international conference that I've, you know, only seen in that environment that we go to all these different conferences all over the world. And so it's an important environment for me because I know how important it is to meet those conference friends that are that share that same interest. Now, I understand uh, before we wrap up, um, Ari, I understand you went to an event in and actually were quoted uh, in uh, um, many newspapers. Uh, Associated Press, actually. Oh, of. right, right, okay. Tell us about that, Ari. You know, I, it was a conference that it's the, it's the East Coast Gaming Congress, but it's about, it was a, con it was a, it's a casino conference. And there were companies there that are also eSport companies, publicly traded eSport companies. Um, and really what the quote was all about was, uh, you know, to understand or make the casinos understand that they crunch numbers all day long. They have people that crunch numbers. There are 2.7 billion gamers or 3.5 billion gamers. And there's 10% of the esports industry. Uh, that's, 10, you know, 10% is uh, competitive gamers. It's numbers, 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 numbers. And it's also watching and observing young people and what they do and how they interact with the products that are being placed out into the, uh, you know, for video gaming and esports and wagering on esports. And what my quote was about, what I was quoted as saying is that you know them so well, meaning the corporations know the, the younger generation so well. The problem is the younger generations don't know you. And that is a problem because at the end of the day, younger people want to trust the companies that they're working with. They don't want to know, they don't want to work with a company that is out, you know, you know, they vilify guys like, like, like Bezos, uh, you know, they vilify guys that become and make it these billionaires. You know, they want to know that when you started your company, you did it from the heart and that you were doing it as a way to connect with them on a cultural level. And that's why GameCon is going to be a very big name it is already. I mean, a lot of people and gamers know about it, but it's going to just continue to grow because that started as grassroots. It started yeah. as we're doing this for the community. We're not doing this for our own benefit. We're doing it because we want the community to thrive and to grow. 
Perfect. Okay, so Ben, um, before we wrap up, what uh, what is coming up for GameCon and uh, EC? Well, you know, we we our goal is the fact that Ari is on the East Coast and I'm on the West Coast is not a mistake. Uh, we're 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 actually trying to develop um, sort of a incorporated universal idea of this, so that whether you're on the West or East, you can attend a GameCon and. Uh, participate in everything like that. So we have um, our, our GameCons are right now, we're scheduling them that will be posted up soon as far as the dates, uh, but I would check or just go to the GameCon website, uh, which is just GameCon, G-A-M-E-A -A for art, and then C-O-N for conference.com and, and check out when the dates are, or at least register um, either on there or on the Facebook, and then we can basically um, get you the information as we get it. And as far as the CEC goes, um, we're taking a different approach this year. We're, we're doing it a little earlier in the year. Uh, we don't want to um, ride at, alongside of the other casino events that are going on, which are traditionally in September, October. So traditionally we, we were always uh, right after um, Labor Day, but we're, we're moving this year because we feel that um, in, um, you know, if we if we do it closer to the middle of the year or the beginning of the year, it actually will give a lot of people the ability to get something moving and done before the end of the year. Right, that's so our, that's, that's our feeling. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, anything to add, Ari? Yeah, so you can find information on the Casino Esport Conference at Casino Esport, and then no s and then conf dot com. Um, there are some tentative dates that they may change that are up there now. We're working on uh, a venue currently in Atlantic City for, um, for yes, GameCon to come back, because that's where we started. And um, Ben is working on some, some, some venues for GameCon on the West Coast in California, maybe in Las Vegas. So we may have a lot of GameCons coming up, and we're real excited about it. Not just that, we plan on doing a lot other things with GameCon in the very near future. Right. Fantastic. Well... Thank you very much uh, for joining us today, um, uh, Ben and um, Ari. And, thank you for uh, having us, Ken. Yes, thank you very much. You're very welcome. And so thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Jason McIntosh of GG Circuit. See you then. <laughs>